Trishi Sharma is one of the research scholars at uh, uh, Indian Institute of Kanpur, uh, also involved in National Blockchain Project and various other cybersecurity uh, initiatives. So good to have you, Trishi, again. Uh, Trishi also spoke recently at one of the National Blockchain Forum uh, summits. So Trishi, do, please do come forward. Sure. Jeez. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Trishi, and uh, thank you for introducing me. Sir. So um, we are here to talk about uh, Web3 and about policy making. So I'll uh, start with a little bit about what, uh, how India is with, with, with regard to Web3. So um, Web3 uh, uh, aims to establish trust on the internet without the need for centralized bodies like uh, governments or large companies. And this is somewhat achieved through blockchain technology, which is a decentralized way of storing and sharing data. So um, according, to, according to some research, the global Web3 blockchain market revenue is expected to reach around $23 billion by 2028, which indicates a huge market that um, India can tap into. Now, um, India has the world's third largest Web3 selling pool, making up 11% of the global Web3 workforce, which is growing at a rate of 120%. So we have, uh, India is a home to over 450 Web3 startups that have collectively attracted $1.3 billion in investments in the past two years alone. And out of these, more than 160 were established between 2021 and 2022. However, due to regulatory ambiguity, 60% of these startups are incorporated outside of India, although they still employ technical staff within the country. So um, things are changing and we are becoming a, a significant force in the Web3 arena, especially as a developer and service provider. And uh, But still uh, mass adoption and user base expansion within India are still there are some challenge with, with respect to that. Like, um, there are some regulatory hurdles which have been persistent uh, obstacle, and uh, there, there is a need for clear guidelines to foster innovation and uh, industry stability. So uh, since 2015, the number of Web3 startups in India has increased sixfold, signaling rapid sectoral growth, and investment inflow into these startups has surged since the start of 2020. Then these startups have diversified are diversifying beyond cryptocurrency trading and they're moving towards different application areas like uh, banking, financial services, insurance, consumer tech, educational technology. And there are companies which are developing uh, hardware wallets that allow individuals to have full control over their crypto assets and personal data. Um, so over, uh, overall, Web3 journey is uh, marked by significant volatility, which requires founders to navigate carefully to add value. And those who have continued through the market's highs and lows uh, over some cycles, some, uh, six to five to six years, they have succeeded in creating substantial value in the Web3 space. And uh, while numerous new Web3 startups have sprung up in India, only a select few have gained global prominence. And uh, that's often because their founders know the importance of community and collaboration. Web3 startups in India are not confined to fintech, but they're, as I said, they're again with different, uh, spanning towards different uh, sectors like entertainment, creative industries. So, so we have some gaming companies like Raw Studio, which are integrating Web3 elements into their platforms. And even some Web2 companies are also adopting uh, these Web3 features to scale and explore new growth avenues. So <clears throat> um, we um, in India, we have a track record of leveraging technology for innovative solutions across various sectors like uh, e-governance and uh, financial markets. Uh, but this, this policy decisions, these are crucial. And current debates around crypto policy in India have been inconclusive and, def and somehow uh, they are confusing, which creates industry uncertainty. And these regulatory challenges extend beyond cryptocurrencies to include issues surrounding um, non-fungible tokens, global licensing, taxation, the IP rights, and 
somewhat the geopolitical considerations as well. So, uh, so the governance issues related to metaverse and um, enforcing uh, end user license agreements across national borders also require immediate attention. And uh, also the privacy remains a significant concern that needs to be addressed by policymakers. <clears throat> now, uh, according to a recent report by a firm, um, the Web3 sector in India could generate over 800,000 new jobs. But however, the absence of clear regulatory framework is prompting um, Indian entrepreneurs to seek more favorable jurisdictions like uh, um, Dubai, Singapore, and Nepal. So if this trend persists, there are some risks um, of India becoming merely, uh, merely a back-in service provider and losing talent and capital to other nations. But if the regulatory focus is uh, somehow in there, it's, it's very crucial and it should be on applications that utilize the Web3 technology rather than the technology itself. So that allows for a greater innovation and flexibility. Uh, and, the, and the absence of a well-defined regulatory framework has led to a cautious approach by companies and investors, which, which results in uh, missed opportunities in the Web3 sector. A strong regulatory structure is important for stability and widespread adoption. And it clearly shows the interface between the traditional and economy and crypto economies. Such regulations can add value to DeFi and the broader Web3 economy by, uh, by fostering innovation in mainstream sectors. So if we have clear guidelines from policymakers, that is very important for the growth of Web3 startups. And given the um, increasing talent pool, these policies should aim to nurture and retain its, uh, the, this, the human capital. So there are, we are seeking for forming uh, global partnerships to standardize Web3 technologies and, and uh, being committed to investing in R&D to sustain the, this rapid growth. So policy making should aim to increase user adoption and address this, uh, this uh, regulatory concerns as it is very much highlighted by many industry experts. There are some initiatives, however, like in India, we have CoinDCX, which, are, which is bridging the gap between individuals and Web3. And these efforts, they should be supported to <clears throat> fast track this Web3 adoption. Risk management strategies are, uh, these are uh, important for, to, the, um, to go across according to the volatile nature of Web3. And regulations should uh, weed out the worthless tokens and scams, ensuring that only the valuable projects survive. The community building, collaboration, these are vital for success of Web3 startups, and policies should also encourage these aspects. Um, given the um, this cautious nature of um, Indian enterprises towards new technologies. Can, there can be some incentives for early, early adoption, which could be beneficial. And there are also some international and local partnerships. Like we have partnerships with Algorand and Polkadot, which have uh, established Algo Bharat and uh, Polkadot India. They have some establishments in India, particularly. So they can, they should all such such establishments should be rich to bring global expertise into the Web3 ecosystem. Policy making should uh, consider how to facilitate the export of successful Web3 solutions which are developed, and regulations should support the use of uh, local cryptocurrencies, ensuring that they meet transparency and security standards. And companies should be encouraged to integrate Web3 into their existing operations to, to have a competitive advantage. Um, public awareness initiatives about Web3 should leverage uh, a user base to drive adoption. Uh, comprehensive uh, regulatory framework is required to address privacy and scam related issues. They should aim for long term sustainable growth in Web3 sector and access to popular and legally permitted payment systems should be facilitated for Web3 businesses. Technical and cost barriers um, are, are present in when we are adopting uh, 
new technologies like uh, we have this um, augmented reality, virtual reality. So these should also be addressed and a favorable investment climate for Web3, for metaverse, these sectors could also be created through uh, tax incentives or grants. So clear regulations are required to build investor and consumer confidence and to prevent talent from leaving the country. And policymaking should recognize the transformative potential of metaverse in Web3 and support the development and implementation. banking, other government and other, other company and enterprise-based uh, uh, systems. Uh, public and industry education initiatives should also aim to drive adoption and innovation in, in these uh, transformative technologies. Um, so I think uh, uh, um, I think that is it from my end. I think I've um, uh, this, there is importance of Web3 policy making and things go uh, hand in hand and we have to take care of uh, a lot of things. We have uh, so globally and as far as there is uh, the thing is about in, in uh, India is concerned, there are many things that we have, uh, there is significant growth. There are many things that we have covered and uh, but there are still miles to go in uh, in these new sectors, and we have to keep uh, uh, evolving. We have to keep understanding new things, and there is a very uh, importance of policy making in order to be very um, clear about things, so that uh, things go ethically and uh, everything goes in a, in a correct manner. So that is it from my end. Thank you very much, uh, Trishi. Um, that was an excellent overview of uh, uh, where India is up to in the Web3 space. Um, uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you so much.